I think that one company to have a smart strategy should spread the wings wherever is possible. So it's exhibition, it's conference, it's uh, social media, it's newsletter, it's uh, online written media. I mean, you have to spread your wings everywhere in order to, to get the influence and credibility that you deserve. I'm sure that there are hundreds of companies in the world in the maritime sector, and we don't know even that they exist. I wish that they are a little bit more courageous to do something about it. I wish. Welcome to the Shipping Podcast, where I meet interesting maritime professionals sharing their passion for the shipping industry and their everyday job. I am your host. My name is Lena Gosberg. Hello, Shipping Podcast listeners, and welcome to episode 236. As you know, one of the targets of producing the Shipping Podcast is to make the maritime industry more visible. In today's episode, I speak with Tatiana Liperti, a content writer for the maritime industry and a leader of the maritime industry on LinkedIn. To be a content writer in the maritime industry, one needs a strong understanding of maritime-related topics, including vessel operations, shipping logistics, maritime law and regulations, environmental concerns, safety protocols, and emerging technologies. It's very similar to being a thought leader. Hence, we have experience and insights into various aspects of the maritime sector, Tatiana and me, and we want to share them. I'm honored and excited to present to you Tatiana Liperti. Every conversation matters. Welcome to the Shipping Podcast. Could you please introduce yourself? Hi, Lena. It's great to see you and to hear you. Best regards to your audience as well. Greetings, actually, to them. My name is Tatiana Liperti. I live in Cyprus, and for the last 25 years, uh, I work in the maritime industry. I started my journey in a small shipping company. It was a German one, as a receptionist. And then uh, I figured it's a very interesting industry. By the way, I'm a certified teacher for primary school, so shipping is something completely new that it was something completely new for me, but uh, from the onset, I really liked it. And uh, to give you a perspective, I started working in shipping when uh, we didn't have emails, you know, all the correspondence with the vessels was sent via telexes. Anyway, so sh very shortly, I realized that I'm passionate actually for, for crewing. So I was working as a crewing officer for many companies for many years, later on transitioned to marine insurance working with the leading ship management companies here in Cyprus, uh, in the world, actually. They are leading in the world. And slowly, slowly, as I'm getting older, I realized that I cannot be involved so much in the operational matters. You know how it is. You work 24-7. You are uh, on duty over the weekends. The telephone will ring during the night. And I got tired. Honestly, I got tired. Par parallelly, I was really passionate about marketing and writing and stuff like this. And um, I started sharing some observations on LinkedIn and I realized that people are interested to hear about this. And last year, I actually transitioned fully from the full-time job to freelancing. So I'm uh, doing content writing for the smaller maritime businesses that they need for LinkedIn. I mean, everybody... Not everybody, people who understand that they want and they need visibility for their company, especially startups, they don't necessarily have time for this. So this is where I jump in. I create content for them. It's ready to use. They just copy paste and they are present. And I could see that you have got 11,000 followers on your LinkedIn account. How did that happen then? Yes. I think, okay, this happened gradually. 
Everybody thinks, you know, as soon as I jump on LinkedIn and share two, three posts, you know, uh, I'm going to be a superstar. It doesn't go like this. You know this as well, because for many years, you're also on LinkedIn, almost 11,000. It's, it's very nice. It's a big number, actually, for the maritime. Yeah, uh, because we are still conservative. We are still not liking or commenting on the posts that we do like. We are very conscious what others will say. We are very conscious what our, what, whether my boss is going to read my comment. So I think that I just got a little bit more courageous. I went out there and I shared my opinion. I mean, what's your experience, Lena? Yeah, I agree. You have to start somewhere and then you start by the people you have met in person, I think. Yeah. And then it grows from there. And, and especially when, because I'm posting on LinkedIn when I do my podcast, the episodes, and then I post other stuff as well. I haven't been as active as I was before, but that also, I get so many comments and, and uh, especially by young people, they don't use the LinkedIn. They send me through text or through Messenger on Facebook or just an email. They're just telling me what they think. Mm. So I think it's a generational thing as well. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. I totally agree. Why do you think it's so hard to get people to comment and like and whatever in the maritime industry? Why are we like that? We are very conscious what others are going to say and think about us, period. Very extremely conscious and cautious, you know. Um, obviously, maybe you can, sometimes it can happen that you like, let's say, a post of uh, your company competitor. I mean, you cannot go on the competitor post and comment something. So in general, people are afraid what others will think and they are afraid of what their uh, bosses are going to think at work. I mean, many times I've heard this. I liked your post, but I cannot comment. My boss is reading. And that's fine with me. The amount of uh, DMs, direct messages that I receive, sometimes it's, uh, it's amazing. It absolutely uh, does not correspond with the number of comments that I have online. That's it. But are we like that in real life as well? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. I mean, you've been on many shipping conferences, exhibitions, panels. Shipping people are very friendly. They love to party. They like the interaction very much. And I really feel sorry, you know, that online we have this rigid culture and we actually limit ourselves not to express, not to expand because, you know, what others would think. I feel re really bad for this because I, I don't know if, if you've been in Cyprus or Posidonia or SMM, you've been for sure. Parties that shipping community is having is, are, are, are amazing. Very funny. But when it comes to online, no. There we have a stance. There we have this uh, seriousness, this professionalism and so on. And what I believe is that we should simplify things and be what we are and uh, share our opinions more freely than we are doing now. Yeah, but I mean, when I was a manager, I would rather hear what my employees were talking about and, and what they thought about things that we did than mm -hmm. that they didn't tell me. So, yeah. I mean, in a way, is it also to do with leadership in our industry then? I mean, that, that they, are, they don't want to show them their bosses what they think about things. So I, I don't know. Maybe I'm constructing something that, that isn't there. <laughs> but, but I'm trying to find why do we do what we do? I think it's uh, up to leadership as well, as you said. I mean, I know companies with very strict policies about social media and employees, although, for example, on LinkedIn, these are all personal profiles and employees are actually not even obliged to share company uh, posts and stuff like this. They are very conscious and some companies are forbidding these things. I mean, so it's obviously a leadership thing. But there are new ones, there are startups and they are encouraging their employees to share their stories because now they understand that each employee and their voice online, for example, praising the company will just gain points for the company. 
Yeah, definitely. And, and also, if I would miss my competitor's post, if I didn't read it, someone can tag it for me and I can find out what's so good with my competitor. Absolutely. I mean, every company should be very conscious what their competitors are doing online. And this is something that I very often say in my post, like especially to people who are, let's say, afraid to put themselves out there. And I always uh, tell them, sail or sink. I mean, don't let your competitors steal your customers because this is happening. Or your employees. Yeah, or your employees. Yes. I always give this example of, uh, of the company, it's uh, Marine Traffic. I am a big, I was a big fan of Marine Traffic. Honestly, I'm a bit sad that it was sold last year because I hope that, the, that this vibe is not going to change. What this company was doing was very special in, the, in terms of uh, employees' engagement. I think that the employees were encouraged to share their own stories, to share their own opinions. Sometimes, of course, company updates if they are relevant to them. I think uh, that they had the freedom to choose. And I think that this worked very well in Marine Traffic case, very well. And I'm, I'm sorry that the other companies are not uh, following this. What's your opinion? Yeah, I, I agree. Because I work with other lines of business as well, and I see the difference. Mm -hmm both in the way the strategies, I can't really, well, maybe there are strategies for the big companies in this industry, how to share and what to share. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, they, they need to have a strategy as well as they have a strategy on communication in general. They need to have a strategy on social media and LinkedIn, of course. If I was told you're not allowed to be a member of LinkedIn or you're forbidden to do something there, I don't think I would want to work for that company. Absolutely agree. I mean, this is a big, huge red flag for someone. You know, if your company is not allowing you to express yourself. I mean, obviously you, you are conscious, you are not going to do stupid things online, but to share your opinion, to comment somewhere, you know, to interact with others, to network, because this is social, uh, social media networking platform, uh, which is uh, made for this. I mean, this is how we expand our network. And uh, yes, I think you are absolutely right. Can I just mention something else that you pointed out? You said every company should have strategy like they have strategy for communication. You are 100% right. But um, I'm sure also that you've came across many maritime businesses with a zero budget for communications, zero budget for marketing, zero budget for social media marketing. And uh, for me, this is, um, this is sad. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying that the exhibitions that SMM or Posidonia or, or exhibitions in Singapore, Asia, USA, wherever are less important. But I think that one company to have a smart strategy should spread the wings wherever is possible. So it's exhibition, it's, it's conference, it's uh, social media, it's a newsletter, it's uh, online written media. I mean, you have to spread your wings everywhere in order to, to get the influence and credibility that you deserve. I'm sure that there are hundreds of companies in the world in the maritime sector, and we don't know even that they exist. I wish that they are a little bit more courageous to do something about it. I wish. I totally agree with you. I don't know if it's the same people who are actually deciding on yeah, strategies and budgeting, because that's also important mm -hmm. for marketing, PR, and also HR in a way, because all, every employee is carrying the brand on their resume. They're carrying it on their when they appear as speakers or when they are attending a conference or whatever, they are representing the company. Absolutely. And they need to feel that on their body. I want to be here and represent company X. Absolutely. This is what I do here. So it goes together. Everything is sort of goes together. Mm -hmm. uh, but my experience is that 
Yeah, I've been working with the so-called soft values in maritime, which uh, doesn't get much money for budget, and that is communication uh-huh. and PR. Uh, HR hasn't been that prioritized lately. <laughs> Maybe it's changing now. And insurance, as you said, because that is also looked upon as a soft value in a way from the sea level uh, people. So I know all about problems of getting paid and getting a budget and getting the message through to the people who are deciding on that, how important this is for their company. Uh-huh. Of course, it's important for my company, but, but it's more important for their company that they put some money where their mouth is. Absolutely. If I can mention now something, which is very interesting. What I've noticed, uh, actually, I was digging a bit how this happened, who started it and so on. Um, I'm sure that you remember Maersk. They had the biggest impact maybe five, six years ago. Suddenly, out of blue, you could see Maersk everywhere. Facebook. It's actually 10 years ago because I didn't. It's 10 years ago. My second interview was with Jonathan Wishman, who started all their social channels. Yes. I wanted, I wanted to mention this guy. He was the one who started all this campaign. And okay, now I'm sure that in Maersk, when he left, they have the, the, the big marketing team. But he was the one actually who opened their eyes to the world of the new possibilities. And I think Maersk was the first one who gained like millions of followers everywhere across social media. And other shipping giants just followed. Jonathan's steps. So, Rick, yeah. Yes, you can listen to, I think it's episode number two. Number two? Where I interviewed Jonathan. Oh, this is a long time ago, Lena. Yeah, so that is almost, it's uh, almost nine years ago I did that interview. Oh my God. Oh my God, it was so interesting to have a conversation with him. Yeah. And what he said in that episode, Jonathan, he said, social media is like, you are attending a dinner party. You come there and you know the rules and you're seated. And first, maybe you start by listening a little bit. What is the conversation about and what are they talking about? Mm-hmm. And then after a while, if you don't get into that conversation, you looked upon like if you're a little bit boring and maybe your person sitting next to you is turning to the next one instead of talking to you. Mm. So I think that is a very good thing that you can have in your head. Social media is like a dinner party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what is expected from me then? I need to bring something to this conversation around the table. Yes. And interesting thing, I'm going to mention now something that I often say to my clients. For example, I always tell them that it's not enough to have a good written post, good formatted post. This is not enough. You have to engage with your with your audience you have to engage with the others on the platform and i said and i tell them do not do not act like a prima donna i am here on my throne and that's it now give me the attention this is not how it happens you have to give in order to receive yeah so posts are really not enough the 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 complete picture so we go back to your analogy about the dinner table Obviously, you know, if you want to uh, perceive that someone valuable, you are going to interact, you are going to talk with other people, you are, you are going to exchange views. So exactly the same thing is happening online. Exactly the same. I think we have a joint mission, you and I, to get the <laughs> maritime industry more, more well known, but also to know each other and to interact and, and be proud to be part of that maritime industry and show other people how much fun we have. Yeah. So. Whenever I see your posts, I see them quite often. I get a smile on my face and I think, yeah, yeah, she made it again. <laughs> she did Thank it. Thank you. But, but your posts are sometimes also instructive. They are always instructive, but you're also a little bit, um, not irony, but you're yelling a little bit on them. Don't do this, but do this. Yes, yes, yes. So how are people receiving your message? What, what, uh, feedback do you get from people? Last year, I, I received one comment, which was, it, it shattered me a bit. It, it was from a very good friend. And she told me, 
sometimes I feel that you are talking to me from a pedestal and you are telling me you have to do this and that, you know, be a little more soft. And I felt very bad, you know, because my intention is really, you know, to engage the community, to inspire them, to tell them that it's okay to post anything, to do, to use conversational words, not to be too, uh, let's say, professional online. Yeah. So I felt bad because I thought that uh, I'm not sending the message the right way. So I softened a bit my language and my tone. And uh, I think that the comments that I receive, especially in DMs, are saying that I'm doing a good thing. I'm doing a good thing and they like what I say. They like the way I format. They like my thoughts. They like, sometimes they say, yes, you are courageous. I'm courageous because uh, I can afford, right now I can afford to be courageous. There are many things that I don't say really and I would like to say, but sometimes, you know, because I'm 50 years old, you know, I know how to uh, bite my tongue. So I don't say everything, Lena. No, I don't say everything either, but but uh, almost everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't think you are too hard on, on how you say it. And in a way, you are the expert. It's like you told us previously mm -hmm. that you are a teacher. You used to teach children how to do things. Yes. And then you have to be the grown up in the room and teach them, even if you're not from above, but you're teaching them out of experience. Yes. Actually, this is one of my biggest the biggest traits, I know how to convey knowledge. And this is something that I've been told in the companies, you know, when the young uh, people or trainees would come in the companies and then you know, they tell me, okay, train them now about stevedore damages, about Holland machinery claims, about crew claims, blah, blah, blah. And I would, I obviously have very good didactic skills because they would tell me you are strict teacher, but you are fantastic teacher because you we can we can get the knowledge from you so uh maybe sometimes i'm trying to do this with my linkedin posts but only really to inspire and to initiate you know like a bigger moment like come on people we are so big you know do something you know get out there say things you know comment engage come on we are vivid industry and uh i don't know if i'm succeeding but if you like it thank you very much I really, really appreciate your kind words. Thank you, Lena. I do that. I think it's great. Have you seen other people who are trying to do the same? Yes, yes, yes. I hope that you are going to ask me this because I want to tell your audience that I have received zero questions before this conversation. Zero questions from you, Lena. Yes. So I didn't know what are you going to uh, ask me, but I was hoping that you are going to ask me this one. What I noticed is that some people are emerging, some young people are also emerging. There are some kind of, there are some people that, that I also admire and I'm happy that they are also present on the platform despite their busy schedules. One of them is um, Cristina Alexandri Munoz. She is a co-founder of Bound for Blue. Have you heard about this company? I don't think so. Yeah, well, basically they are uh, helping vessels to save fuel costs by using uh, e-sales, okay? And what I noticed is, by the way, this, this lady was uh, on the Forbes list 30 under 30. So although she is not in all these big lists, you know, 100 uh, women in shipping and blah, 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 for me, she's super inspirational, super inspirational, and I'm so happy to see her on the platform. Another woman that I admire very much, and I would really like to see her more on the platform, is Dorotea Ioannou. Have you heard about her? Yes, there is, a, there is an episode with Dorotea on my uh, feed somewhere. Yay! Yay! No, there has to be an episode on Do Dorotea, because she, is, uh, obviously, uh, she obviously did something that no woman did in the marine insurance industries. She is the first CEO of p and Club ever in the world. And uh, I presume she's super busy because she's rarely posting, but sometimes she put these clips, you know, from the conferences and speeches. And I love her appearance so much. I love her narrative so much. Whenever she's receiving an award, 
she's never saying thank you and you know this is my award no she's always uh, mentioning the team this is something that i really admire her for who are your favorites these days whom did you notice well i miss jonathan yeah because i think he was so good on that one i think he's now working um, for msc can't remember i think he does but also i see so many posts from other industries that makes me curious and and who wants who gives me the courage to continue and to do stuff mm-hmm. in the way i have been doing i have a friend her name is Karin Orsel she's now the european ship owners associations uh, everybody knows her yeah so you don't think i need to say that she's <laughs> she's now the <laughs> chair of the european ship owners association but she's really good Mm-hmm. She's uh, she's got the friends who's uh, also very hard on her. <laughs> oh, okay. No, but but for instance, the postings from when they are taking delivery of a new ship, when the ship is floating for the first time, mm-hmm. those little films and movies are so good, mm-hmm. and they say so much about our industry and and what is happening. And I think everyone feels like yes, another ship. Mm which also encourages a lot of people. And one of the ships were actually named um, Equality. Equality. Yeah. One of the ships was called Tune Equality. So every time you are calling for a ship now, you have to say Equality, uh-huh. which is great, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yes. Well, I hope uh, that more companies and the youngsters, you know, because youngsters are the ones who are addicted to social media. So I hope that the, that the narrative will change and that more companies will uh, turn to more serious marketing. Another interesting thing about marine traffic, if you if you don't mind, I don't know why I, I always take them as an example, you know, because uh, when I when I hear that companies they have like a zero marketing budget, they don't know what to do, how to do it. I always tell them that marine traffic became number one, not not by coincidence. Last year, they had 15 people, Lena, sitting in their marketing team. 15. Yeah, and then they got sold. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Because they were so good telling the best thing about marine traffic. Yes, yes. But uh, all these people, you know, the people who are uh, in charge of, uh, let's say, of communication with the journalists worldwide. Then you have people who are in charge for the events email uh, marketing uh, they even had podcast all these things you know together but there were 15 people you know there so believe me i mean it's not by accident they, that they were number one and i wish that more companies are understanding how important is them is for them you know to become more present in media in general and uh, start accounting for marketing in their budget also i think Captain Kate is doing a great job for the cruise industry. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I follow her on Instagram. Yes, yes. yes. She's amazing. She's a superstar. Yes, she's a superstar. But also her company realized that rather quickly. Oh, that yes. She was going to become a superstar, in, not just by being the captain of the, of the ship, but also that she. I think she was born to be a superstar on Instagram and at every other social media Oh, yeah. But she's got help from the marketing department and they're helping her out to post things and they're helping her out. She's doing a lot of job herself. She's probably overloaded with what she do, Uh but she's got help. So the support from the marketing department actually to the person who's carrying the brand Uh and being such a great role model for so many people, Uh it's important to get that support. But I think it's also got to do with the company she works for has also taken the decision to have female officers, junior officers and senior officers. And they are helping out mm-hmm. universities, maritime universities in not so developed countries to come and do their trainee time on their ships. So it, it goes through the entire organization. It's not just, yeah, let's have one superstar on, on our Instagram account. No, it's a strategy to do to become more inclusive and, and diverse. So they have decided to do that and then they do it all over with whatever they do. And I don't see that really in other 
companies working in the maritime industry that they have taken one decision and it goes for everything, whatever they do. Yeah. The example of Captain Kate is very interesting, actually, because many times I don't think that she's posting on LinkedIn, by the way. She's uh, on Instagram exclusively. Mm -hmm. If yeah. yeah. So what's interesting uh, about her is that uh, a celebrity is becoming a bigger brand because of her. Celebrity cruises are becoming bigger brand because of her. Have you seen uh, some videos uh, where people say, no, we came to this cruise only because of you, Captain Kate and blah, blah, blah. Imagine her influence. I think that she has like half a million followers so far or something like this, which is so unusual for the maritime industry. So hats off for Captain Kate. By the way, she's promoting Croatia very regularly. And I'm very happy because I was born in Croatia, you know, and she is married to a Croatian guy. So very often they go there and then she, she, she shows around Dubrovnik and stuff. And I'm very happy to, to see that as well. How can we make a difference for the maritime industry? If it's a small company, let's say, they have been focused so far only on attending the exhibitions and having dinners, yeah, with the possible clients. This is the... This, this is fantastic start, yes. So my only suggestion is spread the wings and spread your influence wherever is possible. Are you going to pay a banner in, uh, let's say, uh, Marita, on some maritime platforms, plus 247 trade wins, list, list uh, maritime executive or whatever, do it, uh, sponsor... Uh, some events, do it because your name is going to be visible, spread your influence over social media, have your at least company account online, you know, publishing posts here or there. If you have someone uh, who would be willing to take a role and to develop their personal profile, do it because all these things are going to help you spread your influence, attract new clients. I don't know if you know the maritime, he's arbitrator, Philip Thio from, uh, from Asia. And he's, he's also my very good friend. We met on LinkedIn. We never met in person, but we are friends on LinkedIn. And he's very supportive. I am also very supportive of him and so on. And he told me, I, he said, I got so many opportunities. New clients, invitations for podcasts, invitations for seminars, invitations to speak at the event, only because I'm very active on LinkedIn. So the sooner they realize, the, 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 the companies realize this, the, the, the better will be for them. So this is, this is my message, you know, like, like get out there. If you don't have time, engage marketing agency, engage someone, you know, decide what, what is going to be your budget and go for it. And the other thing that all this requires time. I mean, I'm sure that Jonathan shared this with you. It requires time. You cannot become star, famous, vis visible uh, overnight. It takes time, you know? So it's post after post, post after post, month after month, year after year, until you reach the level of, ah, Lena is recognized as X, Y, Z. Theodoros is recognized for something else. It takes time. As I always say, like uh, marketing is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So spread your wings, spread your influence wherever you can. This is my advice. And participate in all the marathons around the world. Yes, yes. Nothing beats the personal uh, contact. Nothing beats the personal contact. But in lieu of this one, at least become visible online. And for example, w what I've noticed is that when you have nice, solid profile on your LinkedIn and you are asking for a meeting with some guy in the shipping industry, they might check you, they will Google you, they will check who are you, what are you doing, what are you saying, you know, and this gives you additional credibility. And it's actually free, you know, it, you build your authority online, it's free, it cannot harm you, it can just attract more clients that you want. And start by hiring a, a professional photographer to your company and take individual photos. Yes. And then photos of you interacting with, the, with your team. Yes. Then you have a very good start. 
Yes, yes, photos are also very important. Yes, because I always attach photos to my posts. And some people are telling me, like, oh, she, ha she has time to take photos every time. I said, no, I don't have time. I, I just, what I did was once I arranged a professional photographer, I made 50 photos and I'm using them. And I suggest this to any company. Get the professional uh, photographer on board, make the photos, as you said, of all the employees, working them behind the desk, visiting a client, blah, blah, blah. And then you have your portfolio that you can use online, that you can use in newsletters, that you can use on the, on the website, whatever you want. You do it once. So you have one post, you know, and you spread like for the next three years. Yeah, this is very good advice, Lena. Bravo. Yeah, that was the first thing I did when I started my podcast. But I've been working so long now, so I had to do it again. <laughs> yeah. With some newer photos. <laughs> My hair is longer now. Maybe I should do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the future? Where are we heading? Can we become more visible on, on those social media platforms, do you think? Uh, yes, I think that we can. I think that we can and that uh, we are going in the right direction. Uh, why? Not because the, the eldest people, uh, older, older generation realized, but because younger people are coming into the picture. This is going to be the transition, whether you like it or not. I think in 10 years from now, the situation is going to be completely different. Our industry will not be called as conservative. Our industry will not be called as boring. The new flesh is coming and you are going to see the changes 100%. I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. By then I will be nicely retired and then I'm going to see this from some nice chair, sipping a nice uh, glass of wine saying, oh, when Lena and myself, we discussed, we were right, you know. We realized that 10 years from, from, from now on is going to be. <laughs> yeah. So Tatiana, did you have a role model growing up? Did you have anyone that you looked up to? And... My father, yes. This is the first uh, association they came to my head. And uh, he was a lawyer. He died very young. So he died when I was still hungry for his love. And uh, because he was such a good role model in my life, I learned many things from him. I'm doing some things exactly like him. He cannot be compared to anyone. And yours? Who is your role model? I think I've had several during my career. But, but I think my mother, in a way. Because I usually get the, mm. the question... Why did you start a podcast and, and all, of, all, the, all of the different answers, but it also always cooks down to I'm curious on other people. Mm. And I am a, sort of a tech nerd. I don't know much about tech, but I want to understand and I want to learn. And my mother was like that, even in, I mean, she was born in the last century, which, you know, she wasn't that much into tech, but, uh, but. Everything that was going to be done, she, de she did it. My father was just watching her do it. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I've taken that from her. But I have had some great people teaching me the ropes within the maritime industry. And I still have people who do that. Mm. I mean, you can't stop learning. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, now when you, when you mention maritime industry, I want to uh, mention someone. His name is Deepak Prabhakaran, and he is now working for uh, it's Greenpeace in Amsterdam. I'll tell you something. Young people, when, when they start working in the industry, uh, because there are, there are no universities, let's say, how to become a crewing officer or personnel officer or purchasing officer. You don't have this kind of uh, universities, you know, for some roles. So uh, I was very lucky that in one uh, company I landed on Deepak Prabhakaran. He was such a mentor to me. He taught me selflessly 95, 96% of the things in shipping. He had so much wisdom, knowledge, patience, willingness to share. He was the biggest mentor that I had in my career. So thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I mean, you mentioned maritime industry, so I cannot finish this 
podcast without mentioning Deepak. No way, no way, no, no. He, he was the biggest influence and I will always be grateful. Always. Who do you think I should interview in the next? Who would you be interested in listening to in the shipping podcast? Okay. Uh, interview this uh, Cristina Munoz. Okay. I hope she's listening. So <laughs> I don't know if she's listening, but we will tell her to listen because she, she was the recommendation. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I read the post that she is uh, now going to USA or something like this. But if you can get her on board, I think this would be very, very interesting. She got the uh, award last uh, year on Nor Shipping as one of the young entrepreneurs, something like this. Her name is not, as I told you, not present, you know, in all these lists that industry is having, these lists. But I think she is the one that we should focus on. I think that the great future is in front of her, especially because she's involved in um, in the part of the industry that um, is very mainstream now, becoming mainstream. So I think she would be uh, great for your podcast. It's interesting. We have only spoken about women. Yes. <laughs> But for Jonathan. Except him. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So what? I mean, usually, you know, uh, men are talking to men on these panels. You have one female moderator. So what? This is a nice difference then. I hope that your audience will enjoy the shift. Yes, it is. But I want to, I want to have some male role models on social media in the maritime industry so I can put some highlight on them. <laughs> yeah, Lar Lars Jensen, for example. Lars Jensen. Have you interviewed him? No, I haven't. We have spoken about it. We haven't come around to it, so we should. Yeah, I think he is uh, excellent for this. Or this Philip Tioch, this uh, lawyer, maritime lawyer, I th arbitrator, actually. So I think he would be also a very interesting uh, person to talk with. Yeah, but you interviewed some interesting people. Uh, the G Captain John Conrad, this was the episode that I enjoyed very, 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 very much. We had a great time, John and I, when we spoke. Yeah, yeah, it was very yeah, yeah. The emotion you could you could you could feel even the emotion when you when you two were talking. So that's always a plus when you feel the emotion in the in the conversation. I don't know if we managed to to convey this emotion in in our conversation today. What do you say? I am convinced <laughs> that we have. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. It was so nice talking to you, Tatiana. Finally, we got to talk. I mean. I've been waiting for to do yeah. this and, and uh, finally we did it. So thank you for your time and thank you for participating, playing along with me. Thank you very much for acknowledging me. I'm very grateful that you have invited me. I was actually surprised when you invited me. I uh, invited me because I've seen, you know, big sharks, you know, in your in your podcast. And I said, oh, my God, Lena wants me. What? What does this mean, you know? And uh, I'm really, but I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful and I hope that your audience will enjoy. Thank you very much. Well, I try to interview people with different backgrounds and different lines of work and, and different experience. So I wanted to hear all about your experience and you gave it to me. Thank you. You're most welcome, Lena. All the best to you and your podcast. Every conversation matters. Thank you, Tatiana. I enjoyed our conversation. Hopefully we have inspired some people to promote the maritime industry on LinkedIn and other social media platforms. Listeners, if you are not following Tatiana on LinkedIn, I strongly recommend that you do that. I will put a link in the show notes for you to find her. That's all for now. Thank you for listening. Until the next time, from me to you, over and out. Thank you for listening to The Shipping Podcast. Don't forget to tell everyone that you meet that there is a shipping podcast available and that they should download it and listen to the maritime professionals who are sharing their passion for the shipping industry.